Uh, Adams. Here. Here. I have you, Regent Bogus, too. Thank you. Uh, Regent Atwell? Here. This is my name. Regent Bechtel? Here. Regent Cologne? Here. Regent Jones? Here. Is present online? I heard him, yeah. Regent Many Deeds? Regent Miller? Here. Regent Posh? Here. <coughs> Regent Peterson? Here. Regent Rye? Here. Regent Sten? Here. Regent Tucker? Here. Regent Underly? Here. Regent Wachs? Here. Regent Weatherly? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, before we begin today, are there board members who wish to declare any conflicts of interest regarding today's open session agenda? <clears throat> Hearing none, let's proceed. I now call upon Regent Miller to present a report from the Audit Committee. Thank you, uh, Regent President Walsh. Can everybody hear me? We've had troubles yesterday. Um, the Audit Committee met yesterday morning. Chief Audit Executive Lori Starts reviewed the progress to date on the fiscal year 2023 audit plan. She confirmed that her office is making solid progress on the plan with a number of audits currently in progress. She expects to bring more reports to the committee in December. Ms. Stortz then provided a high-level summary of the results of the audits recently issued by the Office of Internal Audit since we met last August. This included executive summaries for the criminal background checks audit and the student behavioral health audit. The, the criminal background <coughs> checks audit revealed, unfortunately, some disappointing results related to widespread lack of compliance. Some of the issues noted were instances of criminal background checks being conducted after a new employee start date, appropriate contingency language and employment agreements, not consistently following procedures, lack of formal risk assessments, and inconsistently performing background checks for rehires, and the required four-year rechecks for persons in a position of trust. The student behavioral health audit produced an excellent outcome. Steps taken years ago to gather data in a consistent manner across the <coughs> UW system have yielded results, putting us in good shape. Ms. Stortz stated that she believes we're ahead of our peers in this area. After that, Ms. Stortz presented the report of the chief audit executive. She indicated that her office continues to work with the ATP project team, staying current and providing feedback. Ms. Stortz stated that her office has hired two new staff members who will, work, who will be working out of the UW Oshkosh office. In two weeks, her office will be holding a team meeting in Madison for training and team building in partnership with the Institute of Internal Auditors. And lastly, she shared the next, that next week she will be attending the Big Ten meeting for CAEs, a valuable experience to learn from our peers in higher education. Next, Associate Vice President for Information Security, Edward Murphy presented an update on the Information Technology Security Program. He stated the top priorities are operations, defense, risks, and assessments. The regions had a robust discussion and we acknowledge the progress that the UW system and the institutions have made working together. We stress that the UW system and institutions should work on accountability for repeat offenders for, for who fail the phishing campaigns or create a breach by clicking on malicious links. The committee then heard from UW Eau Claire Vice Chancellor Grace Kritke, Cricket, who presented the care model for compliance, audit, risks, and ethics. Vice Chancellor Cricket was joined by Nicole Andrews, Executive Director of Enrollment Management, Administration and Recruiting, Jay Dobson, Chief of Police, Allison Hanna, Dean's Assistant, College of Nursing and Health Sciences, and members of the Care Committee for questions. They explained how the care committee can come together to address the big and small risks by spreading the responsibility across the committee. The regents thank the participants for all they are doing for the institutions and the UW system. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Miller. Now call upon Regent Bechtel to present a report of the Business and Finance Committee. Regent Bechtel. Thank you, uh, Regent President Walsh, and uh, good morning, colleagues. The Business and Finance Committee convened yesterday after approving minutes of our August meeting. We proceeded with our agenda as follows. Had a couple of reports and then there's just one action item. First, the committee heard a presentation from our host campus. Uh, Vice Chancellor Grace Cricket commented on the work being done by Chancellor Schmidt and his team to secure the resources necessary to maintain and improve the university's impressive quality and reputation. 
They also offer details on a new financial planning program that is aimed at maximizing the administrative and financial efficiency of operations across all of UW-Eau Claire. Uh, this is a really impressive uh, presentation, uh, and we're uh, very delighted to hear from Vice Chancellor Grace Cricket. Really thoughtful, uh, really thorough presentation. Now, their model utilizes data such as spending analytics, as well as enrollment projections and financial levers to, grow, to drive growth. And they expect to achieve 7.5 million in strategic spending reductions and 3.2 million in revenue growth by FY25, all while maintaining the quality of the student base here at the, at the campus. Vice Chancellor Cricket was then joined by Dr. Brewer uh, Duran. She's the Dean of the College of Business, and she's a member of this financial planning team that we heard about. She shared observations from her perspective in academic affairs on how the program enabled data-informed investment in three strategies focused on increasing second-year retention rates. So they, should, they really drilled down on this campus to make sure that we're holding those students through the first year, the first year, second semester, and then into their sophomore year. The goal here is that this is going to lead to uh, more second-year students, lead to more graduates. The university then will capture more revenue through tuition and enable them to have more of the industry partnerships that we heard so much about yesterday. So very thoughtful, very organic, and we really appreciated the, the, the plan. The committee then approved a proposal to rescind Regent Policy Document 22-2, which provides guidelines on the disposal of works of art. As part of the ongoing review of all of our Regent policies that's underway under President uh, Rothman, it was determined that this subject matter is really more appropriately addressed at the system level. So that's what we'll be doing. The committee was briefed on a draft system policy. This largely adopts the existing components of Regent Policy uh, 22-2 while adding some clarifying language on definitions and processes. It's another efficiency and streamlining method that uh, we're undertaking, uh, Regent President Walsh. Lastly, the committee heard a report from Vice President Sean Nelson, who provided details on the recent consolidation of several units at UW System Administration. As President Rothman had informed the regents at the time, the move combines the offices of administration and finance, as well as shared services, into one office headed by Vice President Nelson. And this is actually a return to the past in terms of the way uh, things were structured. One exception is the risk management function, which is now under the Office of Compliance, uh, so it retains its independence. The reorganization aims to improve efficiencies, communication, and service to the universities in a structure that mirrors the vast majority of public higher education system administrations. Uh, more is to come on the revised structure of the system uh, from President Rothman, either at our November or December meeting, uh, for all the regents' benefit. In conclusion, and on behalf of my colleagues on the Business and Finance Committee, I now move for approval of agenda item E. That's to uh, rescind and adopt a new policy on disposal of works of art. Thank you, Regent Bechtel. Sir, second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right, moving along now, I will call upon Regent Weatherly to present a report from the Education Committee. Thank you, Regent President Walsh. At our meeting yesterday, the Education Committee approved one degree program received a host campus presentation and welcomed campus professionals for discussions of the caregiving cat task force and serving students with disabilities. Committee action items included approval of the August 2022 meeting minutes and a UW Lacrosse Bachelor of Science in Business Analytics program. This program elevates the successful and growing business analytics minor. The major will prepare students to succeed in a data-driven world providing exposure to software platforms and techniques to store, transform, manipulate, analyze, and <clears throat> interpret sets of data. We heard a host presentation from UW-Eau Claire Provost Patricia Klein and Interim Executive Director of Diversity, Inclusion, and Leadership, Dr. Christopher Jurgensen, about UW-Eau Claire's commitment to high-impact student experiences, highlighting undergraduate research. The presentation, the presentation also shared innovative and inclusive strategies that support LGBTQA plus students. Next, Dr. Jennifer Shutterfield Christus from UW Oshkosh and Dr. Stephanie Ratilati from UW Madison provided an update from the care, Caregiving Task Force. It has identified key ongoing issues and concerns of caregivers across the UW system the impact of gender equality and COVID-19 on, on career progression, 
and data to policy recommendations at the campus and system-wide levels. We then discussed students with disabilities and the complexities of providing the access and support they need. We heard from senior student affairs officers and disability service directors from Green Bay, Platteville, Stout, River Falls, and students Amanda Kelly and, and Wesley Kratz Gullickson. Finally, we focused on the increasing number of students seeking accommodations, especially for psychological disabilities and those with autism, and highlighted both the challenges and opportunities to enhance those services. Region President Walsh, this concludes my report. Therefore, I move adoption of Board Resolution C1 and C2. Thank you, Regent Weatherly. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Regent Weatherly. Next up, we are teeing up Regent Rye for a report of the Capital Planning and Budget Committee. Thank you, Regent President Walsh. The Capital Planning and Budget Committee meeting started with a land acknowledgement statement and a welcome by three UW-Eau Claire students. The committee commenced the meeting with item E, the consent agenda, which includes two real estate items, three UW-managed capital projects, two all-agency program projects, and two minor facilities renewal program projects. The committee approved all the consent items. The committee heard a presentation by Paul Seitz, Director of Strategic Initiatives, and Cindy Torst Torstveit, Associate Vice Chancellor for Facilities Management and Planning at UW-Madison on the status of their real estate initiative project, specifically their West Campus Innovation Park Master Plan. The real estate strategy work has advanced through the issuance of a request for qualifications and proposals process by selecting a multidisciplinary team led by Perkins and Will through a collaboration with URP. The university has engaged a broad district advisory group, including campus, district, which would include UW Health, Veterans Administration Hospital, and community partners. Perkins and Will commenced their work in August and September by holding workshops and listening sessions with the advisory committee, campus leadership, shared governance, neighborhood groups, and other stakeholders. Work includes evaluating benchmark targets and traveling to Purdue, Georgia Tech, and NC State later in the year to visit their innovation parks. The committee will receive regular updates on a plan and it is anticipated that the final master plan will be brought forth in the summer of 2023. Next, the committee considered a request to enter into a lease of 50,969 square feet in a new building currently under construction at the University Research Park by UW-Madison Research Units. UW-Madison's recruitment of world-class faculty is currently impeded by their inability to provide high-quality research lab space in a timely manner for new faculty or respond to requests for grant opportunities by collaborative teams. The lease space will be in a new building currently under construction at the University Research Park. The space may also be used for established research and or research centers to free up space on campus for new faculty research, allowing new faculty to be on site at their respective departments, supporting their integration into the university research community. There was a lively discussion surrounding this item. I actually want to thank uh, my fellow regents, uh, especially Regent Posh, for some really good pointed questions. Uh, and, uh, and I think I do feel the discussion was necessary and a good one. Board members raised questions about scheduling. And I'd like to note this is the fastest way for us to produce high quality lab space. The source of funding, uh, which was actually noted to be federal indirect overhead cost support, uh, will support the rent and the tenant fit out costs. And that comes really from the grants uh, that we receive. And the challenges the university faces to continue to pursue grant opportunities, as well as recruit and rec retain high quality faculty. Although the cost of this 15-year lease seems high, the university was able to negotiate not only a lower rental rate, but a lower escalation rate. The tenant improvement cost noted covered design and construction costs, equipment, and a 25% contingency to hedge against rising construction costs, which I think Alex Rowe has definitely educated us on throughout the year. Given the fact that the building is in construction, the university anticipates occupancy as early as 2024. 
item F was approved by the committee. Next, Chancellor Schmidt delivered the UW-Eau Claire host campus presentation titled Innovative Solutions to Capital Needs. Chancellor highlighted the challenges of meeting the needs of evolving academic programs within their existing aging infrastructure. Strategic planning efforts led them to the conclusion that expanding university footprint requires innovative partnerships within their region. The university has had long-standing partnerships with the city and other community groups to accommodate athletic, recreational, and housing needs. Successful projects are the Priory, Haymarket Landing, and Aspen Mogensen Hall, which provides housing for students, and the Pablo Center, which we was visited last night, providing music and theater facilities to meet their academic needs. In development, the Sonatec Center will provide athletic, recreation, and academic space for the university. The university recognizes that dollars for renovation and upgrade are limited and is committed to leveraging partnerships to advance their strategic initiatives, such as in the new science and health sciences building. That completes my report, Regent President. I believe you have a resolution. Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> I have to like scroll higher. I apologize. <laughs> I, I'm old fashioned here. I've just got the tree on my table. I move resolution E, which includes E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, and E7, and resolution F. Thank you, Regent Rice. There is second. Discussion. It was a lively discussion in the CAP Planning Committee, and I'd also like to echo uh, Regent Rye's thanks to the board for coming with such great questions, and also to the folks from UW-Madison for the presentation they gave, and also UW-Eau Claire it was very good. Any other discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Motion passed. All right, next on the agenda, we have a panel discussion on the value of university and business collaboration, something we've heard a lot about at this meeting um, this week. President Rothman, I believe you'd like to say a few words to start us off. I, I do, and thank you, uh, and good morning, everyone. As we heard yesterday in our discussion of strategic planning, the UW, uh, University of Wisconsin system, and more, most importantly, its 13 universities, can and must play a role in helping Wisconsin maintain a strong, and vibrant economy. To do this most effectively, the university needs a committed and productive partnership with the state's business community to better understand and plan for workforce needs now and into the future. At the same time, it also benefits businesses to build strong connections with our UW universities, as well as the human resources within those universities in the form of expertise, ideas, and obviously the talent pipeline uh, for future workers. It is clearly a win-win combination. And that's where we will be exploring this morning. Before we do that and get to the panel discussion, we have a brief video highlighting some of the collaborative efforts that are occurring right here along the I-94 corridor. So with that, if you'd please roll the video. <clears throat> There's so many amazing attributes of working with the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. I've really enjoyed working with River Falls students, faculty. It's genuine, passionate, and skilled leadership. We think it's a really strong program with, uh, with great outcomes and great results for Great Northern. It's a win-win, I think. So, you know, we get uh, great students, we get great employees. My name is Justin Olson. I represent Fastenal Company. My name is Juan Ramirez. I'm a regional recruiter with Fastenal. John Davis. I'm with Great Northern Corporation. I'm Jeff Cernahaus. I'm the uh, Chief Executive Officer of Interfacial. His Mark Risley, and uh, I work for Winfield United. My name is Sarah Karstens, and I'm the Operations Manager for the Research and Innovation Department at Mayo Clinic Health System in Northwest Wisconsin. We have opportunities for students to move around Wisconsin, close to Wisconsin, and really be involved in some high-level uh, uh, jobs and careers. Collaboration between Mayo Clinic Health System and the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire spans decades. 
uh, is rooted in a strong partnership within the, the area of nursing. We currently support over 100 students a semester. We've successfully launched over 33 studies uh, working together, ranging from the areas of pediatrics and oncology and cardiology um, to family practice and palliative care type studies. Our program is an, is an on-campus class. We identify a customer that's interested in this sort of collaborative experience and, and working with students. Um, they provide us with products and the, and the marketing challenge, and then we bring that to the professors and to the classroom. Programs that we collaborate, you know, with Utah-River Falls on and um, include, we've done internships um, for the past decade. We have a couple of um, situations where students work throughout the school year part-time. The second one is um, the joint faculty positions and then the, the final program which is the big one is SciTech. They have uh, 33 full-time employees that came from the University of Wisconsin River Falls and then a lot of those start with internships. We've even had employees here do classes or teachings at the campus and then we've had professors out here to work with us say during the summertime. Just our leadership I think feels very similar. They have frequently coined the term that there's no daylight between our organizations. You can go to the university and ask for help with some of our problems and how they may bring expertise to help us solve. So there's always that every day we can feel free to call up and ask for input and help. We have professors here at UW-Stout collaborating with some of our headquarters personnel such as our engineering team bringing some of those real life um, issues and problems that we work with every day to campus here and giving the students of UW-Stout the opportunity to work with those and, and help us solve them. I'd like to think that okay not just my business but um, several other businesses that have worked with the university have grown dramatically and so there's been obviously uh, the creation of um, you know local jobs, workforce. But I, communication and time together really opens up people's eyes to the potential of creating this um, this continuous path from school to some sort of career path and employment. We want to attract, retain, and grow you know, local talent. Potential ahead really lies with how are we training the workforce of the future to work differently. And I think that's gonna benefit our communities in so many ways, um, but certainly gonna be our rural communities and hopefully will be a model for the rest of the country. The level of kind of partnership and intimacy that, um, I, and collaboration that I've had with, you know, Utah River Falls, the faculty, the leaders, the, the, and their open-mindedness to crazy programs, if you will. One of the reasons we built this facility in 2017 was really the partnership with the University of Wisconsin, uh, River Falls Campus. We had that collaboration for a number of years. We wanted to expand, and it was just an ideal fit. And coming on campus and working with Career Services, they've done everything they can do to help expand our relationship and grow our partnership. Everyone is stronger together. When you find alignment with organizations like what Mayo Clinic Health System has with the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire, you can always do more together when you set the table with that kind of perspective. UW-Stout has been a great partner to work with. See the university as an incredible partner. See model partnership. My experience working with Stout has been very positive. It's been a great relationship. River Falls um, has been obviously impactful for my life, my wife's life, and been a big part of um, our success. I've learned just as much from the Stout students as they've learned from us. It's been awesome. Wow, um, any comments from Regents on the video? Very impressive. All right, in keeping with that theme, we'll now hear from a panel representing businesses along the I-94 corridor, and they'll highlight and discuss the impact of university business collaborations. We want this to be an open discussion, so I want to encourage Regents, Chancellors, and others to participate. At this time, I'd like to invite our panelists to join us at the table. I'll ask our moderator, Steve Yan, Executive Director of Momentum West, to lead off the introductions. Good 
question. I don't think so. Maybe um, you might have to move it. Yeah. It's like, it's like playing mic tag. <laughs> You're it. I wanted to start with uh, thanking everyone for allowing us to join you this morning. It's an honor to present to the chancellors and the Board of Regents and the guests. Um, fantastic video to follow. And, and uh, before we roll into things, uh, I'd just like to recognize something that Jeff said. Um, really, the UW System School has become part of your family. And, and I hadn't thought about saying this until Jeff mentioned it, but you know, I'm a product of two graduates of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. My wife and I both graduated from this institution back in the 80s, and my daughter graduated from UW-Stout. So it's, it's, in, it's in a lot of our blood if you're from this part of the state and throughout the state. Um, my name is Steve Yan. I'm the executive director of Momentum West. Momentum West is a 10-county economic development organization that serves West Central Wisconsin. Um, we are one of nine economic development organizations that collectively blanket the state of Wisconsin. Our topic today is the value of economic development partnerships, and we'd like to talk about the ongoing mutual value and opportunities that are resulting from our region's partnerships with UW system schools and business, industry, and community in our, our part of the state. Our panelists and their organizations are building connections that are changing not only the lives of the folks within those organizations, but the organizations themselves. Uh, they're partnering with uh, primarily UW-Stout, UW-Eau Claire, UW-River Falls, and UW-Superior. Uh, the benefits that we will highlight are significant and broad. Um, as mentioned, please consider this an open discussion. Uh, input and questions are welcome. Um, and what I'd like to do right now is starting with Jeff. Uh, we'll work our way down and our panelists will introduce themselves. Thank you for the invite. First of all, it's clear that the camera adds 10 pounds, so I'm going to have to... <laughs> talk to whoever didn't Photoshop me properly. Um, so, it doesn't add hair though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a lot to Photoshop. So anyway, I'm Jeff, um, the Chief Operating Officer CEO of the Interfacial Business. Um, we're, we joined the Nagase company, which is an $8 million multinational Japanese firm um, back in the middle of COVID in 2020. I'm a River Falls native, grew up on a dairy farm. Graduate of 1990, 1993 of UW River Falls in chemistry. Uh, my PhD is in organic chemistry and, from Minnesota. I spent six years at the 3M company and then started my own business back in 2003. So I've pretty much been on my own for 20 years, been through a couple of transactions and um, believe in thinking globally but uh, um, acting locally. So. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer McHugh, and I am the Vice President of Community Engagement at Royal Credit Union. I also serve as the Chair of the Eau Claire Area Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee, and I serve on uh, the Wisconsin Governor's Council on Financial Literacy and Capability. I'll tell you just a little bit about Royal. You might have seen it if you were at the Pablo uh, last night. We are right across the river from there. You could have walked along the bridge and walked by our corporate center. Uh, we are a $4 billion credit union and we serve uh, Northwest Wisconsin and the Minnesota Metro. So our core purpose is to create a positive impact in the lives we touch. And we certainly try to do that with our partnerships with universities in our region. We are very proud to support their programs and projects and advocate on behalf of the important role that universities uh, play in our regional economy. So I'm really excited to share some very specific examples during this panel detailing how our credit union works with UW system institutions to make a positive impact in the communities we serve. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Brian Elwood, General Manager of Customer Community Service with Excel Energy. Uh, like Steve, too, graduated from UW-Eau Claire uh, many years ago, met my wife here, so we, too, have a family relationship with this university. Um, Excel Energy serves eight states throughout the United States, and we are the uh, largest wind provider in the country. In fact, we're the largest renewable energy provider in the state of Wisconsin as well. In Wisconsin, we serve about 1,200 customers. 
our, excuse me, 250,000 customers, we have about 1,200 employees in the state of Wisconsin. So we serve from Ashland down the La Crosse, from Abbotsford over to Hudson. Um, our team often works with local elected officials, and my team specifically works with external officials uh, throughout, throughout the communities that we serve. Um, we're deeply ingrained in economic development, ensuring that the communities that we serve are strong and healthy. And we're certainly proud of the partnerships that we have with all the universities throughout the area. Um, I'll pass it over to you. All right, well, good morning. My name is Pete Koenig, and I am with Nolato Contour in Baldwin, Wisconsin. We are part of a $1.2 billion medical device injection molder uh, owned by a Swedish uh, holding company. And uh, I have been with Nolato for 16 years. And while I appear to be in my early to mid-20s, I've actually been in the molding industry for 45 years. Um, we have about 10% of our workforce has some technical or engineering tag to it. So we're heavily involved with UW-Stout uh, specifically and uh, really have a close relationship with them. And I look forward to talking more about that as uh, we go throughout the morning. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Bartz. I'm the director in the Career Services Office at the University of Wisconsin Stout. I've been with the university since 2014, and I'm a proud Wisconsin uh, a graduate. Um, I grew up on the east side of the, uh, the state, so uh, understanding the Wisconsin culture and the commitment to manufacturing and the various industries we have represented in our state is a point of pride for myself. Uh, I lead uh, a centralized career services office where we oversee an applied learning program. Our co-op internship program is uh, celebrating its 40th year anniversary this year. And uh, we are excited to uh, say that this year we have reached a, a, a milestone in registrations and working with over 700 uh, employer partners and registering over 1,130 students. So look forward to talking with you all today. All right, fantastic. Let's roll right into the questions. Uh, first question I'd like to direct to uh, Jeff and Jennifer, but uh, any of the other panelists, if you'd like to interject some comments, please feel free. Um, why does your company invest in the universities, Jennifer? Yeah, well, first I just want to give you a little bit of an overview on some of the projects that Royal Credit Union has invested in in the universities. And really we do this because we are very appreciative of the value. Uh, universities bring to our communities. Uh, Royal played a key role in the development of the Pablo Center um, and are proud to have the naming rights in, in the 1200 seat RCU theater. I know you had an event there last night. I'm not sure, was it just a reception or did you see a show? Reception, okay. Well, I, if you haven't seen a show in the RCU theater yet in the Pablo, I highly encourage you to add that to your list of things to do in Wisconsin because it's amazing. Uh, we were at River Falls, uh, UW River Falls a few months ago presenting a donation to the Science and Technology and our Innovation Center. And we also supported the Falcon Center uh, construction project. Uh, we helped the UW Eau Claire Foundation buy new turf at Carson Park, provided matching funds for the Viennese Ball to support student scholarships in the arts. We're sponsoring the undergraduate research conference that will be on campus next year. And I think there might be a mannequin or two in the nursing school with our name on it. Uh, you know, the war for talent is very real. Uh, we know it, um, and we work really hard to be good co corporate citizens by showing our support. Because we know that if our universities and the students are successful, we will be too. Um, so obviously I'm local, and we have four facilities in the River Falls and Western Wisconsin area. And the real reason um, for our focus at River Falls, both my wife and I and why we've been so involved in SciTech is, as I mentioned before, really to you know attract, develop, and retain um, local talent and, and actually attract talent from outside. And so in order to do that, um, you know, competition is everywhere, and um, just like my business, uh, what we really want to create is something 
highly differentiated that people want to look at these local universities as, as that's the go-to university. You know, how, what are we going to do differently to, in this even more massive area of competition as uh, there's pressures on enrollment and everything. And so back um, in 2014, after or just before my transaction with Stratasys, uh, Dean Van Galen and I were talking about um, you know how to how to drive you know better collaboration between industry and, and academia because there's different reward systems there's maybe different you know interest in different outcomes uh, there's there's not perfect alignment all the time and so internships are fine uh, but it's really how do you drive you know institutional change that was the real question and and so we decided that we had to start small and and create um, common understanding, or I like to say moles, within, within each institution so that um, there were people who were part of both organizations that uh, were being rewarded for the success of both the academic institution as well as um, the business. At the end of the day, this transformed into SciTech. We did a uh, joint faculty position in the chemistry department. We've had multiple interns. We've done our best to try to keep those things going, not just through the summer, but through the whole school year. Uh, we were the first company to um, pretty much occupy the entire St. Croix Valley um, Business Innovation Center, not because we needed to use that space, but because to help drive and catalyze the, um, that facility. And I'm happy to say now there's, there's 10 or 15 companies now that we've kind of departed. and are incubating in that particular space. And obviously SciTech um, is, is the big one and that was been leading, leading up to that and really um, it's, it's about creating an improved ecosystem for collaboration uh, between the university and um, local, local uh, business. And so that's why my wife and I have been strong supporters and I um, with the university ask me, I pick up my suitcase and talk about it wherever wherever they ask me to. So, I, I wonder if I could ask Brian and Pete in particular. Um, he mentioned something about when you have a problem that you want industry help to solve. How are you getting in the door to these universities for that? And is there anything we can do to make that easier? Yeah, so, I'll go ahead, Pete. Um, so for us. Um, we really utilize the career fair uh, as a main mechanism and, and working closely with the likes of Brian uh, to get opportunities to come in to present lectures to the students, uh, get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We do a lot of facility tours, of course. Uh, but the key is the, the career fair mechanism that Stout uses is, is exceptional where they really highlight on the engineering side for certain periods so that our audience is very focused on what we do. So we focus heavily on that. And a little later, I'll talk about the creativity that we use in the internship program to interest the students. Yeah, and I'd share, you know, the, the leadership team, the teams here at UW River Falls, UW Stout, UW Eau Claire that, that we interact with are out and about in the business community. There's, there is not an event I go to that they're not present at. I, I was just thinking over the last two weeks, I was at an event with Chancellor Schmidt up in the Twin Cities, some networking event. Uh, Chancellor Gallo was at an event uh, speaking to business partners in Hudson uh, early one morning. And then uh, Chancellor Frank and I, I think, have had two, two different phone calls with Momentum West in the last couple of weeks. So they are highly ingrained in the business community here. So if there's anything we know or we need, we know where to go and, and have those questions answered. Great. Thank you. Let's segue into the, the question I'm going to throw at Brian then. Brian, how do the universities connect with business and industry? Yeah, so um, there's, there's lots, of, lots of different ways. Um, you know, I, th I think it's important to know, too, that the talent pipeline is real. And I know we all hear about that. But for us, it, it truly is. When I looked at my direct team and when Steve called the other day and said, hey, we've got this, this panel, you got to talk about you know, your team and stuff, I, I looked at their resumes. I hadn't done that before. I looked at the resumes and see who went to UW school. Of the 11 direct reports of my team, 10 of them had UW relationship somehow. It's River Falls, River Falls, Eau Claire, Stout, Stout, River Falls, Eau Claire. 
There was one Minnesota in there, but he, went, he got his MBA from UW-Eau Claire, so we'll count him. <laughs> Give him a pass. Um, it's kind of a, an aside, but um, it's, it's really important. My team, too, we've got um, average tenure of over 30 years. So when you come to work for our company, you tend to stay there a long time. So these are people that are ingrained in the community and want to see our communities grow and succeed. So the partnerships that we see are, are deep within the communities uh, throughout the I-94 corridor. Um, a lot of great examples. Stout Technology Park, phenomenal example. Late 1980s, Stout Technology Park was developed in partnership with Excel Energy and the city of Menominee. Today, you look at it, it's home to these international businesses like 3M, Phillips Metasize, Anderson Windows. They provide $250 million of payroll impact in the Menominee area, just through the Stout Technology Park. So they are drawing graduates right into the Stout Technology Park and putting them to work, which is really critically important. Certainly here at UW-Eau Claire, you, you look at all the different partnerships UW-Eau Claire has, uh, Mayo Systems, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, these are international businesses with strong foundations. Those are the types of partnerships that students want to engage with and want to partner with. I'm proud at Excel Energy too, we are also in strong partnership with UW-Eau Claire on the Sonitag Center. Um, Chancellor Schmidt approached us and said, how can we make that 100% renewable? What can we do um, in partnership with your company who has a carbon-free vision to provide all electricity with uh, carbon-free energy by 2050? What can we do together? So we came up with a program, and I'm proud to say that that facility, once it's completed, will be powered with 100% renewable energy. And those are the types of partnerships that students are looking for. Those are the types of partnerships our communities are looking for. I'm very proud of the work that these universities do throughout the corridor. What from the university perspective, Mr. Bartz? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's, when I looked at the opportunity to talk about this, I thought to myself, how do I, how do I keep this into something manageable and practical? Um, I think uh, when I look at how we build and support industries, we do it in, in three, three main ways, and, and two of them were already talked about here. Uh, providing engagement events. Uh, our, our career conference event has been going on for 40 plus years, um, and, and so companies that are taking advantage of the opportunity to connect with students early and often, and building a deep and long-standing relationship with the university often come out and have the opportunity to showcase how they can partner with, with the university overall. Um, I think a second uh, key tenant of UW Stout, for example, is our co-op internship program. Um, putting students in real world applied learning experiences is central to our polytechnic mission. When you look at the tenants of what we're doing, uh, collaboration with industry, uh, we have program advisory committees for every undergraduate and graduate program. Um, providing industry and organizations opportunity to help drive curriculum, uh, whether that's skills, technologies, and so forth. Um, taking a look at uh, research uh, as well, having opportunities to go into the lab and work through those opportunities. Um, talking with Pete uh, about, about the partnership. Uh, we're also a data center. You know, I think a lot of uh, employers reach out to us and say, hey, we've, we've, stouted, or we've recruited at Stout for a while. What, what, what have we done with you guys? And I can point to some reports and say, yeah, Nilato, for example, 22 interns over the last 15 years, um, and showing data to help them make uh, good decisions uh, on how they want to build and partner with the universities. Um, I think the second element is technology and, and, and events. Uh, technology such as the Handshake platform, which is used by all 13 UW system schools, as well as uh, the, the private schools across the state, give employers a, a simple yet easy way to connect with students in multiple ways. Um, our Career Treks program, I know that was brought up uh, a while back, but uh, a collaboration with all of our system partners to provide Wisconsin-based employers a virtual opportunity to connect with students uh, weekly throughout this school year. Um, and then uh, through the Momentum West Talent Attraction Committee, working on our UWIN program, uh, trying to help employers that are specifically in this 10-county region to connect with our students as well. So providing both flexible options, curricular enhancements, as well as recruitment events and technologies are some of the ways that I think we support industry in making connections. And, and I think um, we're just getting off of our career fair week. And so uh, we had 407 employers in, in four days at UW-Stout, and I would say a quarter to a half of them want to know how to get in more. 
uh, in different ways, whatever that looks like. And so we serve as a doorway in making those connections to faculty, to classrooms, and just serve as that information gateway to what we can do. I've been to your career fair before the pandemic. It's extremely impressive the energy and the participation and the number of businesses that I think you had to turn away because there wasn't room. So. It's very interesting to see the return uh, post pandemic. Uh, we are seeing pre pandemic uh, activity from employers. Uh, students as well are slowly what I call crawling out of the cave and engaging with employers. Um, and so we're excited to see what that can hold for the spring and moving forward. <clears throat> Thank you. Let, let's follow uh, Brian Elwood's lead real quick here and, and uh, talk a little bit more about um, you know, how do businesses leverage the, the assets of the university and, and what can the universities do to, to ensure that they can remain competitive in terms of working with business and industry. Uh, and I'll direct this at any of the, the, the folks from uh, Business Industry, Jeff, uh, Jen, Pete, and Brian, if you want to add a couple comments as well. I, I can start. I, I think the most important thing to drive collaboration between business and the university is personal relationships. And I think that um, so in order to build those personal relationships, you have to have um, kind of um, common common goal or synergy such that um, each each group um, feels like they're they're gaining from from that particular interactions so we've been you know worked very hard with the university of wisconsin river falls and stout and and other and eau claire so we've we've leveraged um, each of those universities for different um, aspects but if you boil down to how, why the collaboration the project was successful or was not successful it's it's because of individuals it was carl peterson in the chemistry department who's who's now a dean it, it, it was doug dunham at, at Eau Claire here, and um, uh, it was Gus Myron when he was at Stout. And so those, because those people um, helped us act at the speed of business. And, and so when we said, oh, we've got to get this done in two weeks, or can we come in on a Saturday because we need to use this piece of equipment, or can you please, you know, help us find, you know, your best intern who has these particular um, skill sets, it was a personal relationship and phone call that really drove it. Yeah, and I'll uh, second that personal relationships are so important. We, uh, a few years ago, we came across a program uh, actually at a credit union in Brazil, Secreti, the largest credit union in that country. Uh, and it was a young professional leadership, professional development program. Um, and we thought, wow, wouldn't that be great if we could bring that? Um, to Wisconsin and do it and uh, targeted toward young professionals. And so I called my favorite marketing professor at UW Eau Claire, Linda Pufal, and said, do you have any classes coming up that could do some research on how we could successfully implement this program done in Brazil here in the United States and Wisconsin. And she said, of course, I've got a group getting ready to go through their capstone. So our team worked with her students for an entire semester. They did outstanding research for us, gave us really great feedback and, and helped us build this program uh, for implementation. This week, it launched here at UW Eau Claire. It's called Grow Impact Lead. Uh, we partnered with the university. We held it on campus. It's going to be a six-week session. Uh, our first session was on entrepreneurship. They also do uh, community service projects. And of course, we're getting in some financial education on budgeting and, and things like that for them. But, but it was a program built for students by students with Royal Credit Union as the catalyst to bring it to them. So I just couldn't be more proud and excited about it. And I think that's a really good example of how, how universities can support business. Maybe one more comment. I think the building on um, the relationship side and the leadership side of the universities, uh, those folks taking uh, the time and effort to get to know uh, the people that they're serving and preparing the students for is so important so they know type of things we're up against, inviting us to the <laughs> advisory boards, and I'm part of that with the plastics program. Um, just so that we have a real good understanding of what 
we need from each other to help build good curriculums and, and serve good internships and so on. From career services perspective, what I'd say is, is you know, looking at, at the thought of how we support business to keep them competitive, it's the implementation of best practices and current trends. You know, one of the things that I'm sure many employers in the room or anyone listening could say is in, in western Wisconsin, looking at housing, interns. I had multiple conversations this week with companies that are in rural areas of Wisconsin that need interns. They need that workforce, and then they, they come up against that battle of what do we do about housing? And so we talk about what best practice is, how do you partner, there's, there's organizations and different ways to help them. So from that perspective, just implementing and having conversations with, with industry about best practices, current trends, student perception, things they look for, things they like, and so forth. Well, it, it's, it, it's obvious, I think, to everybody that, that keeping our talent in the state of Wisconsin is crucial. And I'd like to, to throw this at all the panelists. Uh, um, there were a couple that uh, I picked in advance to target, but I think I'm going to open it up to everybody. Uh, how, how is the partnership that you have with the University of Wisconsin System Schools in this region uh, affecting your ability to keep our youth employed in this part of the state of Wisconsin? Anybody at all? I have to start. Um, so I'm so excited about what we've developed uh, within our organization. We developed an uh, internship program that's very unique. Year one, it's designed as a two-year program. In year one, they're invited in, um, and they spend time on the manufacturing floor really learning the roots of, uh, of manufacturing and the process. Uh, and then 80% eight, of their time, they do that, and then 20% of their time, one day a week, they come off the manufacturing floor and are given the opportunity to shadow everything from maintenance to tooling to project engineering, quality engineering for 12 weeks. They get 12 different exposures. So when they finish that first year's worth of internship, they really know what they'd like to do or what they wouldn't like to do. Um, they're invited back year two, you know, if we've got a good synergy between the two of us, and they're assigned to a uh, full-blown engineering team called customer-centric teams in our facility. They'll have real-world customer contact, quoting of jobs, you know, understanding the costing side and the project management side. So again, when, um, when they complete that, they're really ready to come into the workforce. We used to focus just on the last couple of years of their education, but we've really moved that back because of the war on talent that's going on everywhere. Uh, we're attracting, you know, younger and younger people. And not to correct your statistics, but um, since 2006, we've actually hired 56 interns. 48% of them were added to our payroll on a full-time basis. And over those uh, 16 years, we've retained right at about 63%. So I really think it's a successful program. And again, great collaboration with Stout specifically. I'd like to add to that <clears throat> comment on interns. So um, we like to find interns in STEM uh, that are either freshmen or sophomore so that we can, um, two things, so that that individual has an opportunity to really um, understand the career path they're choosing such that, uh, and we have an understanding of that particular individual's um, talents and fit within our organization. So, uh, so we intentionally target uh, people young in their career because the worst outcome is, in my mind, is if a, a student goes four years in a STEM field, never has any experience with what the real world is like, gets into the real world and doesn't like what they're doing. Now they're starting over. This is bad for us as educators, as business people, uh, because then what happens? They go back to school, they wind up doing something else that they weren't trained for, and, and that leads to just bad PR for everybody and bad outcomes. And so the question is, how do you build on, you know, what we've been doing already? And so one idea with SciTech is that if we can create this ecosystem that blurs the lines between um, academia and industry, such that internships, can, we can actually attract with scholarships to attract people um, for a four-year internship. 
So they start and they know coming into that field from the moment they walk in into River Falls or wherever that they're going to have four years of internship to experience their job. And SciTech will allow them to work collaboratively with faculty uh, throughout the school year. So it's not just the other thing that we have experience with is if an intern can only come, you know, for three months during the summer. They spend a month trying to figure out what the heck is going on, okay? <laughs> then they, sp they spend the next month, okay, you know, learning and starting to contribute. By the time that internship is done, they've made connections, but they really haven't substantially contributed to the, to the organization. And so by having continuity, you, you know, we want interns that the moment they receive their degree, they are running and they are contributing and they are engaged and they feel part of our team. So that's, that's a vision that I'm pushing for and that we hope that SciTech can, um, can help proliferate. Yeah, and I, I would agree with those. Longer internships are so much more impactful. We have at Royal uh, over a dozen internships and in all different programs from IT to accounting to HR to marketing. Of course, community engagement. I have three uh, community engagement interns and we do try to hire them in when they're sophomores or juniors so that they can stay a little bit longer. It's more benefit to us uh, because then they are up and running. They not only know where the bathrooms are, but they know where everything else is too and can really make a positive impact. I, I can tell you from my perspective uh, for a credit union that's out and about at events, it seems like several every week the interns really are, they're critical staff members of, of my team. We couldn't do the engagement that we do uh, without them. So um, we, we love having them. Uh, you know, s some other just kind of uh, data for you uh, about that shows the impact uh, that the universities have. We have a team of over 750 people. I called HR to see if they could pull how many had UW degrees. They said, well, we don't have that. But I can tell you that over 100 uh, of our employees are UW Eau Claire graduates. Uh, 20 members of our leadership team are UW Eau Claire graduates. So you are making a huge impact um, on our workforce and it's just, it's essential and we love connecting with students at a young age and then seeing them join our team uh, as full-time team members and growing their careers uh, right here at our credit union in Northwest Wisconsin. I just had one more thing to add to that. But, um, so for example, we had seven interns this summer working with my, my team. Um, two of those interns had their names on patents that were created. One of, that, one of those interns was a freshman. And, and so unfortunately she was from UCLA, <laughs> not, not local. Um, and so it's a, it's, you know, to, you can't just put a person's name on a patent because you, they, cook, they, they worked with you or this, they have to contribute intellectually to the claim, to the claimed invention. And so it's the law. And so, um, you know, that just, that's what we want. We want contributing, you know, material contribution, you know, regardless of um, uh, how long they're there. And, and, and so that, uh, to me, that was a wonderful outcome. Question. I don't know learning is addictive. So what happens after five years or eight years? Because that's part of retaining. And what role does the university play in that? I'll, I'll talk. So I think, um, again, one of the uh, concepts with um, SciTech is that there's continued connectivity with that staff that's been, you know, attract, you know, where we've attracted, we've, we've um, trained at the university and industry, and then now they're working, you know, um, you know at the company but there's still back collaboration because of the personal relationships and the, the, the faculty, the staff, and the infrastructure and the ecosystem such that projects keep going. And so again, when I, when I talk about blurring the lines between academia and industry, 
it's almost not really thinking about them as different institutions. It's, it's having this hybrid um, continued collaboration. And so and there are questions about how is that continuously funded. And, but in my mind, if it becomes of substantial value to industry, it will fund itself. And, and it, it won't be a problem that this board has to deal with, you know, to, to give resources. So I, there, there's plenty of funding out there from industry. They just have to be convinced that there's a strong value proposition. And I think those kinds of productive projects will, will, will generate that value proposition in my mind. So there'll be continued collaboration and growth. And obviously there's ongoing programs that will spin out. I taught a, a course at River Falls um, on entrepreneurship and, and STEM for a couple of years. And so I, I see all kinds of programs like that that could, um, again, come from it and, and continue to blur the lines. But I, I'll zip. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's extremely valuable as an employer to have universities uh, in the in the communities where you you have your business. Uh, Royal has a fantastic tuition reimbursement program. So to have local universities where employees can go to grow, you know, maybe they want that that next step in their career and they need to get some new skills or uh, learn something new, they can certainly come to the university. Our CEO has not one, but three degrees from UW-Eau Claire. So he has really come back here at every point um, as he's grown his way um, up to, to our CEO at Royal Credit Union. But he's... Um, continued his journey with UW Eau Claire as well to help him achieve his dreams and his goals. So it's it's a wonderful collaboration to have. Great. I, I think Regent know. Bechtel had a question. A, a, um, just a suggestion or thought and then a question. Um, we've been working uh, very diligently the last couple of years to think about uh, greater access uh, to the university system and serving some populations that have been underserved in the past. And, and the first one is just an idea, um, because I know when you're doing recruitment, there'll be some new folks coming into the system, about 8,000 of them next fall. Uh, these entrants, we think, will be coming in through the tuition promise. There's a work component to that tuition promise. Uh, those who will be eligible for that program will be in a Pell-eligible of uh, grant, granted family, uh, persons earning under $62,000 a year. So I know in our business community, we're really working on access, DE and I initiatives. So I would just kind of put that out there as a thought and suggestion. Um, and I'm very interested, by the way, that many of you have indicated you're interested in those early internships and early access to students. So, you know, there'll be people coming into the system at that level that would provide that opportunity. And then the question is probably a little bit of a follow-on for what Rodney just asked, and that is, in Wisconsin, there's about 800,000 some persons who are some college. And I'm very interested in, as you look at your talent pool and you uh, have someone who has maybe their 10 credits away from a degree, 20 credits away from a degree, you see that spark, you see that, you know, maybe this person can move into an engineering position or something else. Is that part of your process? Is that something you're looking at? And how can we help you uh, with those programs to capture that very large some college population in Wisconsin? Yeah, and I would, I would say to Excel, actually I have a, an individual on my team uh, who's completing his degree at uw Stout right now and just moved into a leadership role. So he's got a very flexible work schedule, allows him to do that and, and work through uw Stout. I think to, uh, to the point earlier, having these universities in our backyard is critical to retaining talent. I think our employees that are from Wisconsin want to stay in Wisconsin. They want to work here. They want to go to university here, and then they want to work, a lot of them, back in the communities that they grew up in. You know, we serve, our, our company has offices in 13 different counties, so we have employees in Hayward and Ashland and, and La Crosse and, and throughout northwestern Wisconsin. They come to universities and they want to get jobs back in the communities that they work in. We can provide that for them in a very interesting industry that continues to grow and continues to expand and, and engage in lots of new things. So those, those university partnerships are critical to that. The other piece I, I think is really important too is at, at our business, about half of our workforce is out in the field, right? So we've got half in the office and half in, in the field, you know, linemen, welders, gas fitters, people like that having those partnerships with the technical colleges as well and watching our universities and technical colleges work together 
on workforce training and retention and those types of programs is really critical to this part of the state. We're sending hundreds of employees right now down to Florida to assist in the hurricane relief right now. They're leaving their homes in Wisconsin and are gonna go help out in Florida. Super rewarding experience for them, but they're gonna come back and work right here um, in the communities that they grew up in. So having those partnerships between the universities and technical colleges is critical because we wanna keep those workers in our state and keep them working here in the future. Not to put you on the spot, Brian, but are you paying for some or all of that tuition for that some college person? So we pay a, a portion of that, okay. yeah. Okay. Yep. We also have a tuition reimbursement program, a career path process where our folks might raise their hand to say they want to head down whatever sort of career that they're interested in, and we kind of guide them, just help them set up. Uh, here's the type of um, educational basis you may need. Here's some shadowing and or internships or apprenticeships that are out there. So we help them through that process. Again, um, we, we want them to stay with us in, in the long term. So yeah, we help pay for that. Yes, Richard Peterson. I, I have the same kind of question about money and, re you know, you kind of forget how, how much you don't have when you're about 20 years old and there's, you know, every $20 is a big deal. So if you've at, set, allowed this person, or we're gonna help you with your tuition, let's say, are there any stipulations to that? Or what if they say, uh, I, you know, after a year they kind of go, I uh, don't wanna do this anymore. Are there stipulations or you say? If, For us, they actually need to uh, get a B or higher uh, okay. in order to be reimbursed. But what and if we, they just change, oh, you, they, oh, okay, so you, ha you reimburse them afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, we have, a, uh, we have a student that is just such a fabulous worker. I, we have a dairy farm, and he was at Eau Claire. Sorry, Eau Claire, but we told him, if you went to River Falls and got an agronomy degree, we'll pay for your schooling, and, <laughs> and he's done it. But we pay up front, so with no stipulations. If, if there was someone that was in a financial hardship with a good track record with us, we would sure. help him out. Yep. Just curious how sure. that worked. I think most companies, it's a reimbursement type thing. Um, but I think it'd be interesting if it was somehow, t so oftentimes there's, well, even with a four-year degree, obviously there's the people that are maybe just a bit short, but even with a four-year degree, sometimes um, it's hard for uh, River Falls graduates or uh, others to, to find their perfect job right away. And so I think some kind of, hybrid um, internship tied to tuition reimbursement or th there could be a program that helps drive a beneficial outcome both for the university as well as um, the company because we're all looking for the right workforce right now and um, quite frankly uh, in my business it's it's it is kind of at that um, entry level or, or below that's the biggest challenge. It's, it's not, I don't have a problem hiring PhDs. They're a dime a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> so. To talk a little bit about the beginning of that experience, I know that we, in career service, is one of the low-hanging fruits that we talk about with industry often is to partner with our programs to establish scholarship opportunities. I know uh, Nolato has been impactful with our plastics uh, engineering program in driving uh, enrollment uh, through the support financially of scholarships. So again, leveraging the program advisory committee to assist in, in breaking down the barriers to students getting those experiences. And the people that, uh, when you see the potential in someone that you just know they, it's about attitude and work ethic more than it is about whether you're gonna play in the dirt or if you're gonna you know, work with electricity, right? Okay. So it's, I think that that's the people you're looking for, and it's, there's a terrible risk that that kid has thinking, well, what, you know, what if I don't like it? That kind of thing. I, I, I would think that that would, if we all remember when we were that age, and I, I, I was educated as a teacher, and I got to my student teaching, and it was like, blech, yeah. I don't want to do this. <laughs> no, I think that's, you know, I think the question was asked earlier, what, you know, what can the University of Wisconsin system do for us as, as business leaders? I, I would say you're doing a lot right now. You provide graduates that are ready to work. They have the skills to come into the workforce and work from day one. We can provide those opportunities, but I, you know, I think the faculty and staff and 
the leadership teams that we interface with are doing a fantastic job. So providing those employees to us, um, we'll take them from there um, and try to give them opportunities. Um, you know, sure, personal story too, when, when I came back uh, from my senior year, I had a journalism professor here at UW-Eau Claire who said, um, there's an internship at the power company downtown, do you want to work there? I thought, why, why would I go work for the power company? You know, it's the last thing I wanted to do. 27 years later, I'm still working for that power company. Um, turned into a great career, but you know, what we can do as businesses is provide those opportunities once the students are ready, and the universities are doing a great job in doing that. Um, we can provide good pay and benefits, and quality places to live. We, we all support our communities. You've heard that throughout. We want these communities that our, our employees are, are living in to be great communities to live in. We know that the younger workforce today is as much looking for a place to live as they're looking for a place to work at. So we want the communities that we live in, that we work in, to be successful. So we all invest in these communities. We want them to be fun, engaging places. Um, so when those workers come out or when those students come out into the workforce, that they stay in Wisconsin, they can go to work for us in the future. Hey, Steve, we have about five minutes. I'm just going to mention uh, about four or five minutes left. Um, I'm not going to throw another question out. Uh, if there are questions from any of the regents or chancellors or anyone else here, please let me know. Um, but I'd, I'd like to offer each of the panelists an opportunity to kind of throw some last thoughts out. Are there some things that you wanted to mention that haven't come up in the, in the circle of uh, questions and conversation thus far? I would love to throw my advocacy hat on for a second, if I could. As I mentioned in my introduction, I serve as the chair of the Eau Claire Chamber Government Affairs uh, Committee. And I want you all to know that, you know, as, as business people, we are aligned with you. Um, here in the Chippewa Valley, there's something called the Chippewa Valley Chamber Alliance, which um, consists of the Eau Claire Chamber, the Chippewa Falls Chamber, and the Menominee Chamber. And representatives from those chambers go down to Madison uh, every year for the Chippewa Valley Rally. And I've been going for several years, and I cannot remember a year where there weren't university priorities on our list of topics to talk to um, that we weren't down in Madison talking to our elected officials about. So it is great fun to go down and advocate side by side with Chancellor Jim and Chancellor Frank. They're wonderful. Um, and I think that sends a powerful message. And for the university to be able to get its priorities um, put in the budget, you, you need our help. And I just wanted you all to know that we stand with you um, and appreciate all that the universities do for us. Thank you so much. That's invaluable to us. Um, Regent Weatherly, you had a question. Yeah, you're not going to believe this, but that was legitimately my question, was asking you for advice. On, everyone at this table believes in the value that the UW system delivers to the state. It sounds like everyone um, on this committee believes that as well. Um, however, we fall short on communicating that value um, to, state elect, to state elected leaders, and frankly also to high school students increasingly. We have a much lower participation rate. So how do we do a better job of engaging business leaders, whether it's in this area or other parts of the state, but also how do we do a better job of engaging you to help tell our story to high school students about the path? Um, what can we be doing better here? Because frankly, we're not, we're not succeeding as it stands right now. That's a big question. Um, you know, I, when, I, when I thought earlier about what, what could the university system do, pr just promotion came to mind. We have such a good university system. We have such good leadership within the university system. And we have an incredible network of employment base in this state. So promoting that so that students and tough to get into the younger group, but we work on that too so that everyone's aware of what is out there and so that as they go through their education through high school and into college they understand that it's right here so building on the promotional side to me is is just a critical component to um, keep keep things going here in wisconsin in my personal opinion we have to come up with innovative programs that and communicate those to students of why you know our local UW affiliates and UW system is differentiated versus all of the other. So I have a 
uh, senior in high school at River Falls High School, and um, his grades are not, you know, through the roof or anything like that. So I cannot believe how much information he's gotten from universities all around the country. So he is a 28 ACT, that's nothing to sneeze at. He hardly, you know, his GPA is under 3.5, it's maybe 3.3. University of Chicago, Northwestern, Harvard, it's, it's all over. And so I think we're kidding ourselves if um, it, we have to up our game and we have to create creative programs and we have to market those to students if you want to keep our best talent here local. And so that's why I was suggesting a four-year scholarship internship program, something that's differentiated versus what everyone else is doing. Anybody can put a billboard on I-94, okay? Um, so is that really gonna attract the best and brightest locally? I don't think so. They have to have a sense of, you know, community collaboration and differentiation that they believe is going to help them find their way and into a positive outcome and career. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. I'm going to take a risk here and leave the last question for Regent Atwell. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Regent President Walsh. I, I, um, thank you all for what you're doing and for your commitment to our students, to the state, to your businesses. It's awesome. The question that's been in my mind is, as we do the pipeline thing, build relationships, bring students in, have that transition naturally into the workforce, do you see the impact of the broader liberal arts emerge as they move through their careers? Do you see the value in the humanities, the, the sort of the critical thinking, the exposure to literature, all those kinds of things? I know it's kind of a leading question, but I'm, I'm I'm leading the question. I will he say, does that. I'll jump in. I'll say yes. As a psychology graduate from UW Stout, no, without without question, uh, the the value of a liberal arts exposure and program provided me the opportunity to understand how to work in groups, how to understand read people, how to prioritize conversations, and and, and those types of things that I, you can't teach anywhere else other than through a program like that. As a synthetic organic chemist, I'll also say yes, believe it or not. <laughs> and the reason why I'll say yes is because it's not just about, you know, having deep acumen in your field. It's about communicating and interacting with people and making connections in a complex organization. And so that liberal arts background and training, it, it gives people um, connectivity, I believe, and understanding. Yeah, Jeff, I'd agree. I, you know, I think time in, in the workforce is not linear anymore. You don't stay in one occupation for your whole career, right? I mean, I, I don't know what the figure is, 20 different jobs throughout your career, seven different companies, whatever it might be. So our students that are going into the workforce certainly have to have those skills where they can operate in many different areas that they didn't get trained in. So I, I do see the value as well in our workforce. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your collaboration with our universities, especially the collaboration down uh, downtown Madison. We definitely appreciate your help with that. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts and let's keep it going. Thank you. Now it's time for one of our most enjoyable tasks as a board, the presentation of Regent Awards. Today we present the second annual University Staff Excellence Awards, where we'll recognize outstanding staff members from three of our campuses. And I would like to point out that those awards were spearheaded by one of our former student regents, Olivia Woodmansey. We honor these individuals for the extraordinary support and opportunities they offer our students. To lead us in the awards presentation, I will turn the floor over to the chair of the awards selection committee, Regent Kyle Weatherly.
Uh, it is with great pleasure that we welcome today our distinguished guests, the recipients of the Regents University Staff Excellence Awards. We also welcome their families, friends, and colleagues who are joining us for this award presentation. Welcome all. These awards are part of a special family of awards that we are the region sponsor of. We, they also include the region's diversity awards, the region's teaching excellence awards, and the region's academic staff excellence awards, which recognize exceptional service throughout the UW system. The Regent University Staff Excellence Awards, which we present here this morning for the second time, were established last year through a board directive to formally recognize the dedicated work, vital services, and outstanding initiative and contribution of the UW System's university staff. And here, too, I will recognize Olivia Wubnancy, uh, our, our, our Regent Emer uh, Emeritus, who, uh, who did spearhead this, in fact, um, in just her two years here. I would like to thank my fellow regents on this committee who helped, uh, who will be helping to present their awards this morning, Regent Scott Bechtel, Regent Jennifer Stanton, and Regent Dana Walks. In particular, I want to thank uh, Regent Scott Bechtel and Regent Emeritus Michael Grieby, who led previous committees that I served on um, and modeled the behavior of the thoughtfulness, the soberness, and the seriousness um, of this task. So thank you, Scott, and if you're listening in the ether, Regent Grieby, uh, thank you as well. Uh, this morning, we are honored to recognize two individuals in one program that helped to make the UW institution so respected and second to none. Our, their outstanding work, along with the work of the university system staff system-wide, strengthens and invigorates not only our UW institutions, but the communities in which they serve. If anyone wants to learn a little bit more about our award winners, I invite you to check out their profiles on the Board of Regents website. Before we present this year's award recipients, we would like to acknowledge the other nominees by reading their names and institution. And I will say extemporaneously, we reviewed all of them and they were all extremely deserving. Uh, individual nominees um, include Amy Ibuwaka uh, from UW Green Bay, Jerry Baller, UW La Crosse, Glenn Morgan, UW Milwaukee, Keith Hussey, UW River Falls, and Nick Sasinka, UW Whitewater. Program nominees included UW Madison's Do It Digital Publishing and Printing Services, UW Milwaukee's Mail Services, UW Stout's University Dining Services, and UW Whitewater's Sustainability Program. On behalf of our committee, I want to thank all the nominees for taking the time to submit the materials and for the important contributions. Dana Walks will now introduce our first award. I'm not used to reading a speech, so I, I bear with me a little bit. I gotta use my glasses, given my age. Um, it's my privilege to present the first 2022 Board of Regents University Staff Excellent Award in the individual category to Nicole Owen, uh, who serves as the Academic Department Associate for one of the largest departments at UW-Eau Claire, the Department of Mathematics. In addition to supporting the department chair, Ms. Owen supports approximately 200 student mathematics majors, 150 mathemat mathematics minors, 40 full-time faculty and academic staff, as well as more than 100 student employees each year. Ms. Owen also helps plan large-scale events the department sponsors. Uh, these include recruitment events such as the annual math meet, that's something I've never been in, I'll tell you that, um, as well as community building events such as the math retreat and the graduation and awards celebration. Ms. Owen is generous with her time, energy, and expertise. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Nicole participated in campus deliberations with shared governance, the rapid response team, the chancellor's leadership team, and community health leaders to better understand the pandemic. They debated concerns and reached consensus on how to create a safe 
learning environment. In 2016, Nicole co-developed the Administrative Professional Collaboration Group. The same year, she became a member of the University Staff Council. She was elected council chair in October of 2020. In 2021, she joined the UW uh, Eau Claire Caregiving Group which advocates for caregiving needs for both staff and students on campus. Nicole is a part of the planning team for the 2023 National Conference on Undergraduate Research, which we heard about yesterday. Uh, this is a major event UW Eau Claire will host next spring for 4,000 re student researchers from across the United States. Chancellor Smith offered these words to describe our honoree, quote, Nicole is driven by her passion for our students, for her colleagues, and for UW Eau Claire. When she sees a challenge or an opportunity, she doesn't hold back, but plunges in to make a difference. I am so honored to present our first University Staff Excellence Award to Nicole o Owen, UW Eau Claire. First of all, thank you, and good morning, regents, chancellors, provosts, shared governance leaders, guests, and everyone else in attendance today, and welcome to our beautiful campus. I'm truly humbled and honored to be standing before you today to accept the Board of Regents University Staff Excellence Award, and I want to start off by saying wow and thank you. Regents, thank you for starting this award last year for continuing to support this award and for making this award a reality for university staff. To the selection committee, thank you for serving in that role, for your time spent reviewing materials and making decisions that I recognize must be difficult as there are many worthy candidates. Congratulations to all the nominees and to my fellow award winners who will be up next. <laughs> now I'd like to take a moment to thank my nominators because without them, this award would not be possible. Abba, my cheerleader and biggest champion, thank you. Thank you for recognizing and valuing the dedication and involvement and passion that I show in my work. Thank you for all the time spent rallying the troops together for this nomination. It is heartwarming and truly appreciated. To all who had a part in this, thank you. Alex Smith. Thank you for being a compassionate, patient, encouraging boss, mentor, and friend. Your leadership and trust has encouraged me to strive harder and reach farther. Thank you. And Abra Brisbane, I look forward to this continued growth under your leadership. And a huge thank you to my entire department is necessary, really. They're such a great supportive group, and I consider them my family. Thank you, all of you. Thank you to my university staff council team and my, all my fellow university staff colleagues who have entrusted me to be your leader for the last few years. Thank you for your trust, your guidance, and support. It has been a privilege to sit at the table with you all, and we make a great team. And last, last but not least, I'd like to thank my guests who are in attendance with me here today to share this moment. Thanks for being here. My husband, Dan, thank you for supporting me, for being my partner, and for your patience and understanding. Mom, Dad, and Grandma, I got my work ethic from you. 
You've made me into the person that I am today, and thank you for setting a great example. Tony and Debbie, thank you for being here and showing your support. And to the colleagues and friends who chose to be here today and have always been in my corner, thanks for being here to celebrate with me and share this moment. To all of you, thank you for believing in me and supporting me throughout my career. And just in case for some reason I forgot someone, how about just a broad thank you, everyone? <laughs> now, seeing though I'm in the math department, it's quiz time. How many thanks were in that? Did, it, did anybody add it up? If anybody gets the guess right, I'm buying lunch, just so you know. As a part of this award, I was suggested that we comment on what it takes to be an outstanding university staff member. And with my Norwegian background, the first thing that came to mind when I saw that was ufta. It's a tall order, but I do enjoy a challenge. As I stated earlier, members of my family who are here today set a pretty glowing example of what it means to have a strong work ethic, dedication, and fortitude in everything that they do. So here's my thoughts. I truly believe that it's not about making it through your day. It's about learning, growing, and enjoying your day. Realize that you are a part of the bigger picture. Last year, our professional development conference, who I'm a vice chair on, the theme was, it starts with us. And us was having a double meaning of university staff. We are the backbone, we are essential, and we are important. However, we seem that to be the most humble, authentic, and underappreciated employees on campus, even though we're so important to the functionality. I think that's partially because we don't spend enough time knowing our own worth and being our own champions. So don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. Be confident, be assertive. Be willing to take a step outside your comfort zone and try something new. Ask yourself, where can I make a difference? Where can I bring value? Break down silos and build relationships with your neighbors, colleagues, coworkers, students, and administrators. After all, we are all here for the students that we serve. Always take time to listen and, of course, laugh. Those are some of the most important things. Don't be afraid to have crucial conversations because those conversations can lead to great change, compromise, and growth. And last, be kind, show initiative, have integrity, be compassionate, nurture growth, stifle negativity, empower positivity, and be a good team player. We all know in this room that research shows that engaged students are here to stay, while engaged staff are here to stay too. Treat them well, trust them, and appreciate them. Colleagues, take the leap, get involved, and become part of our future. Thank you again. You know, it's really meaningful when you look back to that part of the room and you see the friends, family, and colleagues uh, of these award winners. So uh, thank you all for coming today and supporting uh, our excellent nominees and, and winners. The uh, second University Staff Excellence Award for 2022 in the individual category goes to Jolanda Rimes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Jolanda Joe Johnson. Uh, she's the Assistant Director of Payroll and Benefits and Human Resources at UW-Stout. Now, Ms. Johnson has worked in the university's Human Resources Office since 1999. She's taken on positions of greater responsibility and is now helping to lead the critical functions of the benefits and payroll team. The campus community has come to rely on her empathy, dependability, and big picture thinking. As one example, Joe helped conceive of and implement the Ask HR program to ensure timely responses to requests and questions. Joe also worked with programmers to develop a work overload tracker to replace an outdated, get ready, spreadsheet system. For both new systems, 
Uh, Joe helped implement the software solutions and the change management process as well. Joe is part of the advisory committee for the system-wide administrative transformation program, a program we spent a lot of time talking about and funding here at the region's level, so thank you for that. Um, she collaborates with the UW Shared Services to provide feedback and to review training materials developed for payroll and benefits across the entire UW system. Ms. Johnson earned the Stout University Staff Employee of the Month in January 2018, and she has been nominated for the award more than any other employee on campus. Joe became a trusted resource for employees to go to for help and guidance during the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Chancellor Frank, she observes of our honoree, quote, every interaction with her has left me impressed. Joe is knowledgeable, thorough, professional, and goes above and beyond her responsibilities to ensure the questions are answered and tasks are completed, unquote. It is my distinct honor on behalf of all the regents to present our second 2022 University Staff Excellent Award to Jolanda Joe Johnson of UW Stout. nervous, so please bear with me. Board of Regents, everyone in attendance today, thank you so much for this honor. I'm thrilled to represent UW Stout and our um, entire hardworking university staff employees. I want to thank uh, Terry McCann, who's in attendance today. He's our CHRO and my supervisor, and Chancellor Frank. Um, for their support and always cheering me on. This, res this recognition isn't just about me. I'm the one standing here with my name on a plaque, um, but I couldn't do what I do on my own. We have a fantastic group of committed professionals in our human resources office at Stout. I view this as our award and thank my HR family so much for their support, hard work, and dedication to each other as well as the employees and students at our campus. I have to give a special thank you to my payroll and benefits team. Um, I'm going to name them because they're important. Tammy Oberly, Jewel Lohr, Jen Schermitzler, and Annette Colino. We are so lucky to have such a talented and caring group of people working together to make sure our employees receive the very best service possible regarding their pay and benefits because that's why most people work is for their pay and benefits. I would also like to thank my family, especially my husband, for putting up with my long hours when deadlines are looming. There's always a payroll or benefits deadline on the horizon and he does his best to understand and provide support where he can. The comment, are you working, is said to me a lot when we are together, and I know it must get old after a while. Speaking of deadlines, open enrollment is happening right now. <laughs> and October 21st is the deadline. Don't wait till the last week, please. That's my service announcement. I love to learn from others, and my prior supervisors over the years have taught me a lot. Before I came to Stout, I had a supervisor teach me how not to treat people and employees. That definitely changed when I came to Stout in the Human Resources Office over 23 years ago. To date, the leader that I have probably learned the most from is Christy Krimplebein. She's sitting right back there. 
She no longer is my supervisor, but will always be my trusted mentor and friend. Thank you, Christy, for the support when I needed it, the debate when we didn't agree, and the questions you ask sometimes to provide me a different perspective. Sorry, I'm emotional all the time. But. This award means so much to me as I try to give 110% to everything I do. I'm so proud to be a part of UW-Stout and UW-System. Human resources, specifically payroll and benefits services, are also uh, often considered back office or invisible to employees in administration. That wouldn't be the case if we weren't great at what we do. I'm proud to provide accuracy, dedication, excellent service to ensure that what we, what we do is mostly invisible to our employees so they can continue to provide an excellent education and learning experience for our students. I am and will always be Stout Proud. Thank you very much. Our third University Staff Excellent Award for 2022 goes to the UW River Falls Custodial Services. UW River Falls Custodial Services is an integral part of campus life, creating a clean, safe, welcoming community for students, employees, and visitors. Staff embody the spirit of campus core values and contribute positively to the university's mission of helping prepare students to be productive, creative, ethical, engaged citizens and leaders. The program employs more than 50 student, student custodial employees, including a student, student hiring coordinator and student trainers. Professional, professional supervisors and, custo and custodians work together with the student custodial staff to provide excellent service to the campus. Campus visitors consistently complement the cleanliness of the university buildings and their positive interactions with the custodial staff. Custodial units ad adapted their job responsibilities and increased cleanliness procedures during the COVID-19 pandemic. They found new ways to meet the expanded workload, even when they were understaffed. For example, they helped to empty and clean a large residence hall in one week so it was ready for COVID-19 quarantine and isolation. UW River Falls Custodial Services earned the first Chancellor's Recognition Award for university staff in 2021. In the nomination materials, Chancellor Gallo, uh, he described the impact of custodial services this way. The professional staff all go above and beyond to mentor the student employees, not just on how to perform the custodial work, but also in qualities like leadership, professionalism, and how to live out our campus values. The entire department is characterized by a strong work ethic combined with a deep understanding that we are all here. We are all here for the students. It is with great pride that I present the 2022 University Staff Excellence Award to UW River Falls Custodial Services.
I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Melissa Davis. Please call me Missy. And this is Jackie Bennett. We head up two of the largest custodial services departments at Univ River Falls. And we'd like to thank you all for this wonderful recognition. I have no formal speech, so we're just going to go off the cuff here because that's how I am. We have a very dedicated, friendly, outgoing, wonderful staff that we enjoy working with every day, every week, and we rely on them so hard for everything that comes up, whether it's a coffee spill or somebody was sick or there's a big event coming up or we have to empty a dorm in a day or a week or whatever. We pride ourselves on how we handle those situations, um, how we collaborate with everyone around us and we work to solve problems and make sure that everyone has a clean, safe environment to live in and to work in and to learn in which is a very fundamental, important thing we see in our eyes. What I'd like to point out is perspective, and everyone's perspective is different. We see things differently than you do, obviously. We see the dirt, the grime, the cleaning up after, the setting up of, the, you know, everything on the service side of things. Um, we highly appreciate um, people and how they help us and what we do in our everyday lives um, as we work and live on campus. We work in people's homes, in the dorms. Um, we bu build relationships with our students. Uh, the dorm staff have a personal relationship with the students who live in the dorms and in the buildings. And from uh, a perspective where I started out as a custodian in one of the Res Life dorms, and Jackie as well, um, on campus. Between us, we've got over 50 years on campus. Um, and our, one of the distinctive things that I remember is a freshman came into the dorm. And I was working, and I, I'm a friendly person, I like to talk to people. She was stressed, and I could tell, so I struck up a conversation. I tried to find out what the problem was. Well, she's from a small town, just came to campus, was really overwhelmed. And I'm like, what can I do to help you? She's like, I don't know. I think I need to go home. I'm going to call my parents. I'm going home. I'm going home. I said, you've been here a week. Let's go talk to a couple people. Who's your roommate? How are they? What's their major? What are they doing? Let's go talk to your RA. Let's make introductions. So I made sure I walked her down to the RA, talked to the RA, alerted the hall manager, and made sure I talked to the other students around her to talk to her. Within three weeks, she stopped me in the hallway and said, hey, thanks, I made a new best friend. And I'm like, I'm so glad. And you're still here. That's the point. Making connections and making people feel special is what we do behind the scenes. And I really appreciate our staff and what they do and how they do it. Chancellor Gallo has been very gracious and supportive of us, and I appreciate that very much, along with all of our other staff on campus. Um, our staff is what make us look good, and they do a great job. So thank you, everyone, for this prestigious award. And all of our custodial staff, appreciate it. And just make sure you change your perspective some days and look at it from our point of view. And uh, be nice and have grace. Thank you. Winners, we're proud to be part of your team. I will now call on Regent Adams to read a resolution of appreciation to UW Eau Claire for hosting our September meeting, Regent Adams. Greetings. <clears throat> I have thoroughly enjoyed my first but definitely not my last visit to University of Eau Claire. Um, from the students, athlete greeters, the visual and performing arts being on full display, I am a uh, performing arts graduate um, from high school and it just gave a really nice time to be able to reminisce and reflect on those experiences. Um, to the student and business community literally singing your praises. Um, your heart has been on full display, 
And uh, thanks to uh, Jillian Rossman, a third year student in the Biomedical Innovator Program, um, I have a motto of your heart to take back home with me. Um, so uh, the close of the Community Partnerships video uh, sums it up. It's been awesome. Um, and you really have made us all feel special, so thank you. Um, so I'm very pleased to present the resolution of, appreci of appreciation to UW Eau Claire. <clears throat> Whereas the members of the Board of Regents are pleased to recognize the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire as the official host campus for the board's September 2022 meeting and whereas the board is grateful for the generous hospitality extended this month by Chancellor James Schmidt and the entire Blue Gold community and whereas the board appreciated hearing Chancellor Schmidt's presentation inclusion innovation impact following impressive performances of the blue gold marching band reserve officers training corps rotc color guard and talented blue gold singers mitchell krieger ashley terrell and the singing statesman and whereas the audit committee learned about the systematic and best practice driven care model for compliance audit risk and ethics presented by vice chancellor for finance and administration grace cricket and whereas the business and finance committee thanks vice chancellor cricket for her presentation on financial planning in support of uw eau claire strategic plan designed to ensure administrative and financial efficiency across all university departments and operations and whereas the Capital Planning and Budget Committee heard from Chancellor Smith on how UW Eau Claire is innovating to address capital needs by exploring partnerships from public private collaborations with Blue Gold Real Estate, the City of Eau Claire, and private partners to leveraging renovation opportunities to advance the university's strategic plan. And whereas the Education Committee thanks Provost. Patricia Klein and Christopher Jorgensen, Interim Executive Director of Diversity, Inclusion and Leadership for, pre for presenting UW Eau Claire's strategies to expand access to high impact experiences for LGBTQA plus students. And whereas board members were pleased to return to the Pablo Center at the confluence in downtown Eau Claire for tours of the university's newest facility and special musical performances that included a Wisconsin premiere. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Regents hereby thanks UW Eau Claire for this month's informative presentations, its forward thinking spirit, and its many innovative contributions to the UW system and to the state of Wisconsin. Thank you, Regent Adams. Uh, now, before we adjourn, we have some regents with communications, petitions, and memorials. I know of two. Uh, Regent Posh, perhaps we start with you. Yes, I'd like to give a shout out to my alma mater, UW Platteville, who had four students participate in the Skills USA competition in Atlanta, Georgia, and won a uh, bronze medal for teamwork competition. Wonderful, thank you. Regent Many Deeds. Thank you, Regent President Walsh. This has been a great two days here at the campus, uh, but I want to inform you of something that's very, very important. You know, just a couple of days ago, I had one of our fellow regents ask me why it was that we read the land acknowledgement before meetings and uh, what was the purpose of it and, uh, and uh, why, why should we do it? So we had a discussion about this. And along those lines, today, is September 30th, which is a day that we recognize 
the atrocities that Native students endured when they were put into boarding schools, uh, taken from their families in order to learn the dominant culture. And I can tell you that uh, firsthand knowledge, I went to one of those schools for three years. Uh, the, the people that were there were doing the best they could. But the problem was that we were there with other people that had been kids, that had been taken from their families. And you know what happens when young children know, don't understand or know why they're in a situation. Uh, it turns into uh, bullying, fist fights, a time which is not good for anybody. And it wasn't their fault. So a lot of them have had, over the years, emotional problems, things that weren't good happened to them in those schools. And uh, this is a day here on campus that the uh, Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, Student Affairs group and the Inter-Tribal Student Council group are going to have a walk to commemorate and uh, think about those things that occurred. The first one is at noon and the second one is at 3 o'clock. You can join us and walk in one of those, but if you can't, we understand but I would just ask that sometime during your trip home or sometime during this day that you think for a minute about that, about how you would feel as a child taken from your family, put in a, a school in dorms, uh, which were just open areas like this to sleep in. And you didn't have a home, you had a, basically a prison and how you would react and how you would feel. And I'll tell you, that's part of recognizing this, is part of us giving Native people um, recognition, which for many decades and centuries was denied. And so they need it, they deserve it, and they should be given recognition and, so that they're proud of who they are. And believe it or not, that's necessary today. So that's all I have to say. Uh, sorry to be kind of a downer at the end of a great two days, but this is an important day also. So thank you for your attention, and uh, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you very much, Regent Many Deeds. Are there other memorials or communications from Regents? Hearing none, thank you for your attention. Enjoy your weekend.